and made a specific warning to a specific group of people. The people who thought that they were going to go do some good by going on down to the riots, armed up, with whatever ideology. It didn't matter. It doesn't matter. It is not a good idea. You give the media fodder. Even Zero Hedge, look here. L.A. man arrested with massive arsenal while impersonating National Guardsmen. As the world braces for yet another night of protests as governors from Texas to the Northeast insist that they would never allow the military to unload on American citizens, technically, active duty military aren't legally allowed to perform policing functions per federal law. Posse comitatus, we know all about that. The man identified as 31-year-old Gregory Wong was arrested wearing military clothing and carrying a rifle and handgun near Los Angeles City Hall early Tuesday after he was spotted by National Guard troops who noticed something unusual about his attire and alerted police, as per NBC News. As one local reporter said, Wong was armed to the teeth and likely intent on committing an extremely violent act. The reporter added that he had a line of Wong's motives. Was he Antifa, a white supremacist perhaps, but was reluctant to share his information until it had been, quote, triple confirmed. An honorable instinct, we must say, given that reporter spread sensational falsehoods has becoming the staple of contemporary crises, right? So, it's honorable that they're waiting for his motives to be triple confirmed, right? Let me tell you something. If his motives were Antifa or white supremacists, it would already be all over the news wires. So your flags are raised. Well, let's go look at and see what this situation is. We'll go to Twitter. Let's go to the comment section. So you see here, you see the kit. This is obvious why the National Guard troops saw him. He's got better kit than they do. So they're like, who's this guy showing up who's got better kit than I do? They've obtained a photo of him while being arrested. Okay, so that's him standing at parade rest, talking to the police that he just got turned into. Okay. Sources tell me Wong arrived in an Uber during curfew and tried to get into formation with the National Guard when he was noticed for having an AR-15 instead of M-16. I'm told he said he wanted to defend a jewelry store from looters, but he never left formation. Well, here we go. I personally know Gregory Wong. And his intentions were nothing more than the protection of the people, not to incite a mass casualty event. Please stop watching CNN. Interesting. He's a f- airsoft LARPer, laughing my ass off, not a deep state dude. That's interesting. You know, typically whenever you're talking to people who are hiding behind their anonymity online in these comment sections, very rarely do you see people saying, I know this guy. That's interesting. And then come the jokes. He's on the Wong side of the law, obviously. Did they get motive from him yet? Waiting for triple confirmation before I report that. But yes, we have heard what it is, and we are working on it. Can't let it get out. Can't let it get out. What is his motive? Bill, this is his page. It explains a lot more. I know Greg Wong personally. Choose your character. Right there, so he's a cosplayer, he's an airsoft player, and at some point he got that uniform. Interesting. But could he be a Chinese agent? China is infiltrating the protest, you know. That would be Trump trying an FF. The guy is far right. Hmm. I know Gregory. He served in the military and honorably discharged. He is a technical advisor for military TV and video games, widely popular in the airsoft and cosplay community. He is a really stand-up guy, not some maniac. Can't believe he put himself in this situation. And here we see uh, Megan Fox Ryder. Lockdowns are for losers. She's on it. Bill, have you seen his Facebook page? He's an army paratrooper. Looks like inactive. And it looks like he might have been 
out to help protect stores. I'm not sure, but an army man would know not to impersonate the guard. That seems like a stretch. This story is weird. But unfortunately, the vast majority of the people have already left this story. They've seen enough. Even before we watched the Choose Your Player montage that he put together himself, they left. They left us as thinking that it was an Antifa infiltration, a right-wing infiltration, a Chinese infiltration, and that his intent was to cause a mass event in the name of the military, and he's brainwashed. And the unfortunate thing about all of this is that people in the community, they're going to go down these rat lines, and it's a big, giant waste of time because somebody made a stupid, dumb, dumb decision to go down there. And when I said last night, don't go down there, this is his webpage. The webpage of Gregory Wong. These are his pictures, you guys. Look at this. Does he have an about bio? United States Army Paratrooper 2008 to 2014 active, 2014 to 2016 reserve. A few years later, I enlisted in the U.S. Army in 2008 pursuing the MOS 25 Bravo IT specialist. I graduated from Airborne School and was then stationed at Fort Bragg, North Carolina with the 82nd Airborne Division. Later, I served in the 78th Signal Battalion in Japan and then returned to Bragg to become part of 112th Signal Battalion, yep, which is Special Operations Airborne. After the Army, I pursued a marketing job with PTS Professional Training and Simulation. Professional training and simulation. You know, the last time I made a video about somebody who specialized in simulation, it got my video pulled off the internet. You remember that nurse that we were talking about from New York? She called herself a, a simulation. What did she call herself? A, sim, a simulanista. A sim, simulanista. I can't say it. But she called herself a simulanista because she was so good at simulations. She played in the Sim Wars. And here's another one specializing in simulation. And I'm trying to give this guy a break. I reside in LA constantly, pursuing new ideas. Lately, I have been fortunate to provide military technical consulting in the film and TV world, helping make projects more realistic and fun for military audiences. And here's the kid's Instagram. Turning point. What a mess. So you have a guy here. He was even in the guard. If he's always been in L.A., then that means the guard, they, they knew him. More Instagram. Here's his Twitter. This weekend was insane. I got strapped to the side of a helicopter, did two night missions, died a lot, learned a lot, met a few badass women too. I'm still tired because, damn, running for your life with all that. Clearly talking about simulations. He retweeted this yesterday. Just called the police because there was a dangerous standoff between my neighbor and some protesters and got the response, Sir, the city is under attack. Do what you have to do. And they hung up. Did that really just happen? So let's recap this now. This all started with a Zero Hedge article, a media outlet that many truthers go to with a headline saying that a mass this guy had a massive arsenal and was impersonating a national guardsman it makes no mention of any other circumstances they even went so far as and this is zero hedge now remind you as quoting one quote one local reporter saying that he was armed to the teeth and likely intent on committing an extremely violent act those are very strong words the most disgraceful part of the whole situation they went on to defend this reporter's unwillingness to disclose the motivations that he had learned they even went so far as to say that it was an honorable instinct that this reporter hold back on th just this one part of the story of course he could tell every other part of it but when it came to what the motivations are no, we need to leave that up. Is it Antifa? Is it white supremacist? These are the things that they needed to be left up into the air and unknown. And they backed that. Because of the nature of the news cycle, it was on NBC. They picked it up. You see the same headline, then it's on Fox. You see another headline. 
And then after all this information has been disseminated, as the Twitterverse is blowing up and everybody's already drawn their lines on who or what this guy is, a day later, you get the final update. And that's the update where the reporter is finally comfortable in releasing what he feels is the motivation. Which, of course, we did five minutes of research and we could tell basically what was going on with this guy. But here's the thing that really sucks about the whole situation. No matter what the reality of the situation is, whether you are inclined to believe that he was an overzealous uh, cosplay airsoft player that just wanted to help, or whether you're inclined to believe that this guy is somebody who advertised on his webpage that he specialized in simulations and was full battle rattled downtown, dressed like National Guardsmen to the layman, it doesn't matter because the lines have already been drawn. This is the comment section underneath the final update. And look at the first response. You seriously just tweeted that out and you call yourself an investigative reporter? Armed paramilitary are blowing police officers' heads off and you accept the explanation from people who know him, i.e. friends and family? Do you realize the national security threat? So they endorse vigilantes? Dude has issues. Fubar. He's an agent of China. This is not a joking matter. We are infiltrated by spies. What are you talking about? What are you talking about? And it goes on and on and on. This is insane. How the hell do you go from impersonating a guardsman and looking for people to shoot to having good intentions? What do they think he intended to do while guarding stores with an AR-15? Smile sweetly and politely ask people to kindly move along. And this is a perfect comment because this is the kind of cognitive dissonance that's created by fake news. This person read the original articles that did claim that he was armed to the teeth and most likely had bad intentions. And so when this person reads that article and then shows back up the next day and reads this article, they're confused. It doesn't seem right. How can you go from this extreme all the way to, oh, never mind, he was just an, he's a veteran, ex National Guard? How do you get from here to there? And he, and this person's confused. Why? Well, because the initial story was fake news. They intentionally withheld the information about the motivations behind this kid. They withheld that on purpose. And the news companies were complicit. It causes this kind of confusion. We're in a comment section where everybody's already taken a position. Nobody's reading the actual articles or getting the background information. And some people who are trying to read are actually legitimately confused by an article that was written one day and then written the next. Somebody asks about the weapons and the reporter says yes they were real highly customized and modified AR-15 a ghost gun no serial number loaded with 556 mags and also a Glock. Okay so guys will buy the upper receiver and the lower receiver separately and then they can put them together and like make their own and I don't know why you can sell the lower receiver if their intent is to ban that weapon but they, you can and that's what they do that's the ghost gun okay because it doesn't have a serial number so there's that please do not let this guy go there are so many sleeper agents in the USA there is no way in hell this guy armed with non-registered no serial number guns was there to play they always have innocent lives until they are activated. Don't take the risk. Laughing my ass off, he plays airsoft. He's not a sleeper. He's a nerd. As someone who knows this clown, let me tell you, he is a racist, sexist piece of trash. He is also mentally unstable to even own a gun. The dude needs to be locked up. He's a danger to the public. Oh, also, let's mention his stolen valor. Chinese intelligence agency is good. Of course, this would be the story. Let's not be obvious to truths because of racism. Okay, so you guys get the point. He decided to get his kit and head on down there with good intentions, supposedly. But the problem of him making that decision is that people are bringing up legitimate questions. 
you're obviously not that stable if you think that that's a good idea to do. And it is a good cover story for somebody if they were going to go down there and turn that situation into an FF. And you do specialize in simulations according to your own web page. All because you decided to go down there with your guns thinking you're going to help the situation in its current state. And you're not. So in my honest opinion at looking at this, and I'm somebody who is... I always go for the far conspiracy if I can. But on this one, it, it really does look like a dumb guy did a dumb thing. But the difficult situation is, is let's say he had not been noticed by the National Guard and something horrific had happened. All his neighbors would still be saying the same things about him. You know, he oh, he's just a little off. You know, he's a good guy. He does cosplay airsoft. He's a veteran. You know, all the same things would come out. But we would have a much different outcome. And with the current way things are right now, you can't rule it out. So this guy, regardless of how it comes out for him, he's created his own storm. But, you know, without focusing on the guy, because there's no way we're ever going to know if he was a sleeper agent, was he being hit with voice to skull technology? Was he being, was he, was he under, under, under some other kind of control and, and his wires didn't go right? Because we all know the Manchurian candidate kind of idea. They take somebody who's actually kind of in his position, like a veteran, somebody who's kind of obsessive about looking cool and doing the military G.I. Joe thing, and somebody's a little too hua and then this is the kind of guy that they're targeting under this theory. And so it's 100% possible in this realm that that could be what the situation was. That's not what I think the situation was. Personally, and I'll always tell you when I have a personal opinion, personally, I think that from what I've seen, he probably knew somebody and was going to try to slide in with a partner and just um, guard whatever store he was at, whatever he was assigned to. He made a dumb decision. That's my personal opinion. But it could absolutely be that a sleeper agent was stopped early. That is a, That could possibly be. And he created that possibility by going down there. Now, all that aside, the enemy of the people is the corporate media because none of this would have been a problem if there hadn't been sensationalized headlines all around it and the reason why there were sensationalized headlines all around it is because they were intent on trying to pull the conservative right into this fight somehow like I said last night, as Antifa and BLM and all these other institutions work out how they want to be in related to each other, we need to let them work that out and then we can talk to however they form up after that. But the media is the enemy of the people. At the time that they wrote this headline, they knew exactly what the situation was behind this guy and they could have presented the facts in such a way they could have framed it to where it didn't instill fear and panic and cause people to take sides. But that's not what they chose to do. They chose to say that he was armed to the teeth and likely intent on committing an extremely violent act. And at the time that reporter said that, he knew the entire situation. And then Mr. Durden, Mr. Tyler Durden, he defends this reporter's unwillingness to talk about the rest of his story. The one thing that causes the, the linchpin of the entire story. And they go so far as to defend him by saying it's an honorable instinct to be, quote, triple confirmed in the only part of the story that matters. And in the beginning of this paragraph, the answer to why they do that is right there. The reporter added that he had a line on Wong's motives. Was he Antifa? Or a white supremacist, perhaps? That was the whole point of this story. So by the time that they are reporting the actual news, people don't believe it. And they shouldn't. You have 
seven or eight major news outlets that carried this story and they all said different things but you know what only one of them mentioned that he was prior service it is to foment fear to instill fear and to try somehow to create a quote right-wing loon do not give these people what they're looking for it is the one part of the equation that is missing and so I wish this guy the best if he meant no harm and he truly was just making a dumb decision they could have possibly stopped a sleeper cell who knows I'm glad that happened if that's the way it went down and the end of the day it's really hard to figure out unless you know the person individually because we essentially can't trust anything that comes across our screens these scrying mirrors that we carry around with us now but anyways guys I'm heading to bed like share sub I'll catch you next time